Thank you very much. Hello, everyone, and thank you all for coming. Um, I'm here to answer the question, do climate refugees exist? I've been told I have till 8.02, so I should probably just get on with it. Um, we know that people will be forced to move as a result of the increased frequency in natural disasters we're all witness to. Slide here from the Pakistan floods in 2010. Sea level rise affecting coastal populations and small island states like Tuvalu, the Maldives, the Carteret Islands. Water stress, increased drought and desertification already affecting the Sahel but lots of southern Africa. We know that these impacts will force people from their homes. And in fact, that people are already moving. Just last week, the Internal Displacement Monitoring Centre, a Norwegian body, um, sorry, published a new report headlining that 42 million people were forced to flee disasters in 2010 alone. 90% of those were climate related. So why the question? Well, let's start with the term itself, climate refugee, and I will use although slightly reluctantly, some inverted commas, um, refugee is a tricky word, bound up in all sorts of imagery and not all of it positive. It's also a legal word. In reality, it's a guarantee that a person who's lost the protection of their home state can seek sanctuary in another country. Born in response to the Second World War, the drafters obviously didn't have climate change in mind. And so those people moving in this context don't qualify as refugees, and I'm not saying they should. In fact, the crux of this issue is quite how complex finding a solution is. So should a person fleeing drought disaster at present arrive at a UK border seeking international protection, they'd be turned back. If we begin to pull the problem apart a bit, what we find is the way that we've actually framed this issue so far has removed the space that we need to find solutions. And I'd like to talk to you guys tonight about three specific concerns. I'm going to talk on language, numbers, and causality. If we start with language, there's currently about 12 different terms being bandied around to describe those affected. Now, that has obvious implications for research. It makes consistency exceptionally difficult. But the term you choose also tends to predispose you to certain solutions. So if you're using climate refugee as your term, you tend only to look to refugee law for solutions, and that's short-sighted. On top of that, we've seen the re-emergence of some deeply unhelpful metaphors. Not new, but with new resonance in this context. Waves of migrants, tsunamis of refugees, in part compounded by the fact that those who are responding to this issue have tended to remain within their own sectoral silos. So the environmentalists aren't talking to the development sector, the development sector is not talking to the refugee sector, nobody's talking to the peace building sector, and the humanitarians want to keep it to themselves. And it frustrates progress. If we move on to numbers, we find that we've just about removed all of the space available for a sensible discussion. Now, the numbers game is problematic for a number of reasons, not least, as I've just seen tonight, because numbers are obviously a problem for me. That was supposed to say one billion. The embarrassing part is it doesn't even say 10 million. It's a sort of non-figure, but let's just pretend, <laughs> pretend that's one billion. Um, current displacement projections range from about, yeah, 24 million at present, so 24 million people affected now, to 1 billion in 2080. Now that huge range isn't helpful. All it tells us is that this at present is educated guesswork and nothing else. In reality, we know very little about how climate change actually interacts with the other drivers that force movement. And so trying this kind of incessant desire to quantify what is quite a complex issue hasn't furthered the plight of those affected. What it's done is hamper a kind of more nuanced look at the situation, and it's handed space to the far right. And I guess that's probably one of my central concerns with this issue, is that climate-related movement unifies two issues, 
that are essentially red rags to the bull of the far right, climate change and immigration. And so, although largely well-meaning, the way we framed this issue so far has actually just fed that process even further. And the culmination of such sensationalism, talk of thousands of, of climate refugees waiting to cross boats to get to Dover, is images like this. This is Buckingham Palace surrounded by the tsunami of climate refugees we're all at threat to. People are not a threat, but this, this is where we're at in terms of our messaging on this subject. This has been on show at the National Theatre and at the Museum of London. And it's deeply problematic for a number of reasons not least because it's entirely erroneous. The great majority of people who will be affected will be displaced within national borders. Very few will cross an international boundary. If we touch briefly on causality, again, we find that this search for a single definition is equally unhelpful. So yes, climate refugees, but in reality, what we're talking about are highly variant displacement scenarios so yes, we're talking about people displaced by rapid onset events, but we're also talking about people who will have to move because of much slower degradation of the landscape. We're also talking about voluntary migration as a coping strategy, and in some cases, proactive government relocation of individuals. And a failure to recognize that risks the application of inappropriate solutions. The other very important point in multi-causality is that it's unlikely except in a kind of very small number of circumstances that will ever be able to kind of pull climate change out as the sole driver of movement. All movement is multi-causal. So where do we go? What do we need? Um, I think the most important point to take stock of is that we rarely, if ever, have been given the opportunity to plan for displacement. It's usually something which happens and we respond. Here we have that opportunity and we need to grab it with both hands. We're right at the start for all of the reasons I've tried to outline at the beginning of finding workable solutions, but there are ideas out there and we, we kind of know where we want to take the issue. Of course, we need higher level commitment. We need more research, we need to better understand those nuances, we need more learning. But above all, here in the UK, we need to reclaim the space that we've relinquished on this issue to have a sensible discussion about the actual consequences. And so that's when it's down to you guys. Think of this as a call to action and as a challenge to everyone in this room. Talk to your neighbours about it. Talk to your colleagues about it. Don't use the term climate refugee. Um, use environmentally displaced person. Less catchy, more neutral. Um, I challenge you to take this forward Please, if you're involved in this issue in any way in an organization or you'd like to get involved, please come and talk to me. I hope that you guys will help me start a new kind of conversation on this. Thank you. <laughs>